Now we're going to be covering our couture sewing techniques and here we're just going to be learning some of the key stitches that are involved in couture sewing, some of the major stitches we use to kind of finish off our hem so it looks professional and sewing at a higher level. We're also going to cover some decorative uh, designs as well as basic ruffle, flounce and even a handmade flower. So let's get started. So in these next videos, I'm going to be showing you the different kinds of stitches that we often see when we are trying to take our sewing to a bit of a higher level. So we're going to cover some of the common stitches and techniques that we can use to sort of elevate our designs. And um, remember, we covered in Who Couture how heavily hand sewing related uh, sewing was. So you always want to make sure that you sort of begin to master hand stitching as another way to sort of secure your uh, designs and elevate them to a different level. Not everything can be ran through a machine. Some things are just going to require hand sewing. So what I've done for this lesson before I go there is I've asked you guys to acquire some cardstock and just to create these little fabric squares for yourself, what I've basically done is I've gathered two small pieces of muslin. Remember I said four by six. I opened them up and I laid them side by side, kind of like this. So I just overlapped them one on top of the other until they created this look here. And so once you've done that, you just stitch straight down and it looks like this. So we're going to use basically for some of the seams or some of the stitches rather, we're going to use this uh, piece of fabric to mimic uh, some hand sewing techniques. And why I said to do it like this is that way, once you put it on the cardstock, you can then just label it what it actually is and have it inside your notebook um, as a reference so that when you're sort of before you can commit these to memory you can sort of refer back to these pieces of paper to help you remember how to do it. I mean you can get them from a book by looking at a book but sometimes it helps when you actually practice it for yourself. So with that being said we're going to go to the first one which is a basic stitch. So anytime you're doing a basting stitch, we kind of covered it a little bit in darts where we dart, um, basted our dart. So you do your normal threading. Again, when I'm doing my sewing, I like to just use a single thread, meaning I don't knot off the ends. As you can see here, this is not knotted off. So I don't knot off the ends and I just have one sort of free hanging thread here. You always want to keep one a little bit longer. That way, um, sometimes when you're pulling it through, if one's not long enough, you you would have pulled it through and then it completely undoes the thread. So you just want to make sure that you have one hanging and you're going to realize that's going to be something you're going to commonly do when you're hand sewing. You're not really going to find a lot of hand sewing where you're knotting off both ends. And you can either use a seam gauge or you can eyeball it. Here I have also this, um, the table has the grid markings and they're usually about a one inch square. So you can use any of these techniques to sort of practice your basting. And I have a piece of fabric here folded. And what I'm just gonna go in and show you guys is first um, how to knot your, let's get the focus in here. So you're gonna take it through Okay. All right. So I'm just gonna first take it through. Gonna pull. And right now I'm just gonna create a knot within the fabric so that I can secure it here to the fabric. So even though I don't have a knot at the end of it, I can still secure it this way. So I go in. here. 
I'm going to go back in and near that stitch that I came out from, I'm just going to go in again and come back out and pull it through. And that's going to give me a knot. And that way I know that the fabric isn't like, we're not going to have it pull through. This is just for basting. So you're going to take this out. So you don't want to make the knot too tight. So that once I've done that, I kind of like to use my needle as well as a guide. Again, if you don't feel comfortable, you have your seam gauge here and you can use a seam gauge as a way to tell you about how far that stitch is going to be. So you want to do between an eight, uh, a half an inch to a quarter stitch. That's totally up to you. Okay. And then you're just, it's just a regular stitch. You know, you can either go, you can pick the fabric in, pull it out. And that's just a regular basting. If you want it to be a little bit quicker, you can do a running stitch and it basically a running stitch is you not, you're not picking up the needle from your fabric. So you're just going in. It's looking like this on this side. And again, and this is called a running stitch and it's just a quicker way to do it. A basting stitch, I don't normally secure the ends. You can if you like, the same way you secured the front. I don't normally because again, you're using, when you're doing a basting stitch, the goal is to take it out. It's just a temporary stitch that you're doing. And at some point you're gonna take it out so that you can, um, after you've done the machine stitch. So this is just like a prep for a machine stitch and you're gonna see it being used, especially when we get to hems and those different kinds of things. When you're trying to combine the fabrics and you don't want any bunching in between, the basting stitch is, is a way to just keep the fabrics nice and secure. So that is the basting stitch. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Videos are uploaded weekly covering dressmaking, fashion, lectures, and more.